Hi students. In this video, we will solve questions number 78 to 82 in the 2024 SHSAT practice exam. Let's get started. For 78, it says a soccer coach purchased 15 pairs of cleats for team members and spent a total of $805.95, including tax. If the tax rate is 8%, what is the price of each pair of cleats before tax? This means that $805.95 includes the 8% tax. We can set up a proportion here. 108 over 100 equals 805.95 over X. This means that $805.95 represents the total cost plus the 8% tax and we wanna figure out the price before the tax was added. So that's gonna be our unknown variable. Let's cross multiply. We have 108X equals 80595. Remember, when multiplying a number by 100, you're simply going to move the decimal point two places to the right. So we have 80,595. Let's divide both sides by 108. 108 cannot divide into eight. It can't divide into 80. However, it can divide into 805. And that's gonna happen seven times. We know this because 108 times seven, right? Eight times seven is 56. Seven times zero is zero plus five is five. And seven times one is seven. So that's 756. So our remainder is 49. I'll place 49 right next to nine. So now we have 499 divided by 108. So I will give four a try because 108 times four, right? Four times eight is 32. Four times zero is zero plus three is three and four times one is four. So that's 432. And we need to identify the remainder, which is 67. So we can place 67 right over here. Now we need to identify how many times 108 can go into 675. Let's give six a try. 108 times six. Six times eight is 48. Six times zero is zero plus four is four. And six times one is six. So that's 648. So that's perfect. So we have 746. We still have a remainder of 27. Anytime there's a remainder, I prefer to add some zeros and place the remainder right next to the zero. So we now have 270 divided by 108, which is going to be two. So our remainder is 54. Now we have 540 divided by 108. And that's gonna be five. Because 108 times five, let's take a look. Five times eight is 40, put the zero, carry the four. Five times zero is zero, plus four is four, and five times one is five. So this is the cost of 15 cleats before tax. But the question is, what is the price of each pair of cleats before tax? So we still have one more step. We're gonna take 746.25 and divide that number by 15. This is a lot of computation, so I hope you guys are ready. 15 into 74 goes four times because 15 times five is 75, 15 times four is 60. Our remainder is 14, so we have 146. I know that 15 times 10 is 150, so 15 times nine is going to be 135. So our remainder is 11. Let's add our decimal point. 15 into 112 goes seven times because 15 times seven is 105. And then we'll have a remainder of seven. Finally, 75 divided by 15 is five. So the final answer here is $49.75. Guys, keep in mind to make the SHSAT a little bit more difficult, some of the questions are aligned to seventh and eighth grade content. However, there's a lot of computation involved. So you're going to have to take some time to memorize your 13 through 19 times tables so that you can navigate this exam with success. Let's check out number 79. The numbers M and P and Q are different and each is equal to one of the numbers one, two, three, six, or 12. 
If 2m equals 6q equals 1 half n equals p, what's the value of p? I'll start off by taking a look at the behavior here. If 2m equals p, I know that p is divisible by 2. I also know that p is divisible by 6. I can also tell that if 1 half of n equals p, then n is going to be the biggest number. So let's try out n being equal to 12. If n is 12, then 1 half of 12 equals 6. And then 6 times 1 also equals 6. So that means q has to be 1. And then 2 times 3 is also equal to 6. So we have our values. We have p equals 6, n equals 12, q equals 1, and m equals 3. So the correct answer choice is C. Question number 80. We're given a data set. If a person chooses a number at random from the set above, what is the probability that the number is less than 0 0.005? When working with decimals, I prefer to line up our decimals so we can see exactly what's going on. Let's start off by writing 0 0.005 because that's what we want to compare it to. And we'll line up all of the other numbers right underneath. We have 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0.0001 and 0 0.00001. This decimal over here has five places after the decimal point. We can go ahead and fill in any of the missing zeros so that all of the numbers have the same number of digits after the decimal point. We have zero here, two zeros here, three zeros here, four zeros here, and two zeros here. Now, all of our numbers have the same exact number of digits after the decimal point. When we write it this way, it's very easy to compare the numbers. This number is considered 500. This number is considered 10,000. This number is 1,000. This number is 100, 10, and 1. And we want to identify the numbers that are less than 0 0.005. So 10,000 is not less than 500. 1,000 is also not less than 500. But 100 is definitely less than 500. So is 10, and so is 1. So we can see that three out of the five numbers are going to be less than 0 0.005. So the correct answer is choice G. For 81, a student uses spinner R and spinner T to generate a list of two digit numbers. Spinner R determines the digit in the tens place and spinner T determines the digit in the ones place. What is the probability that the two digit number determined by spinning each spinner one time is a prime number? We can use the counting principle to solve this problem. The counting principle would have us consider the possibilities in spinner R, which is four, times the possibilities in spinner T, which is six. So four times six is 24 total possibilities. Now we need to identify how many of those 24 possibilities will give us a prime number. Let's list out our sample space. If the spinner landed on one and then landed on one again, you could get 11, 11, and 13. So those would be three chances if it started off with one. If spinner R landed on two, then the only value for spinner T that would yield a prime number is three. And that can happen only one time because 21 is composite, so is 21. 22 is also composite and 24 is also composite. So 23 is the only prime number uh, that starts with two. If spinner R landed on three, then our possibilities for a prime number is 31 and 31. So that's two chances there. 32, 33, and 34 are all composite numbers. Finally, if spinner R landed on four, the only prime numbers that remain are 41, 41, and 43. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total possibilities out of 24, which simplifies to three eighths. So A is the correct answer. For question number 82, you are being tested on angle relationships. Remember, the sum of the angles within a triangle must always add up to 180. Vertical angles are always equal. 
And anytime you have a linear pair, meaning two angles that form a line, they will always be supplementary or add up to 180. Let's solve this problem. The angle that measures 100 degrees is forming a vertical angle pair with this angle right here that's inside the triangle. We also know that if X is out here, this is also a vertical angle pair. Finally, we know that 135 is a linear pair with this interior angle. So 135 plus this missing angle has to give us 180. And that's gonna be 45. So let's set up our equation. 45 plus 100 plus X will give us 180 degrees. So we have 145 plus X equals 180. If we subtract 145 on both sides of the equation, we have X equals 35 degrees. So G is the correct answer. If you learned something in this video, please go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe, and let me know if there are any topics you'd like me to explain a little further. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date on our new videos. See you in the next video.